Welcome to Uncover, the show dedicated to exploring what we need to know about God, the enemy, and ourselves to win the war for our destiny. Your host, Dr. Peggy Karlosky, psychologist, writer, and speaker, admits that there's no new truth, only that that hasn't been uncovered. And now, here's your host. Good morning and welcome to Uncover. You know, I've never gotten tired of the title of this show, Uncover, because I realize what it is referring to is that it's not that there's any new truth, it's that there's truth that sometimes we haven't come to to find for ourselves. Or sometimes we have been told certain truths or we've been taught certain things about God's promises and His Word that we can just lose sight of as we live our lives in this fallen world. We can almost forget some of His promises and sometimes we may not say it, but in our heart we may start feeling as if those truths don't exist anymore. And you know, recently I was reading, just opened my Bible up and it was a familiar passage and it's in John the fifth chapter, and it's where Jesus heals on the Sabbath. And, of course, the Jews, who were really wanting to find trouble with him and so forth, start accusing him of doing what is unlawful, of what he's doing on the Sabbath is wrong. And they're trying to cause trouble for him. And in doing so, Jesus responds with the statement that, I guess I'd never really thought about this other message that was hidden to me in his response to those that were accusing him. Again, I feel like when I read it, this passage, that the Lord uncovered something to me that was there all along. And I want to read it to you. First, <clears throat> I want to start with the 16th verse in the chapter, because it's talking about the, the Jews persecuting him. For this reason... The Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Verse 17. I want to see if you hear the hidden message here, or it was hidden to me. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that, that God was his father making himself equal with God. Well, when I've been reading before in this chapter, I focused on the story that he had healed on the Sabbath and they were just trying to catch him in something and it was ludicrous to, to uh, criticize him in the first place for healing somebody on the Sabbath. But what really jumped out at me when I was reading verse 17 is this. My father has been working until now and I have been working. You know, when you think about that, the MacArthur Study Bible brought out that God was working continuously. And since Jesus himself worked continuously, he also must be God. I got to thinking about that. We may be living our lives sometimes and think, God, are you doing anything about what's going on in the world? Is there? Have you just kind of forgotten about us? Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like, didn't seem like God was intervening at all in your situation. That just seems like sin had took over or you see so many things going wrong in the world and you think, has God just given up on us? Has he just, you know, um, letting us walk out our lives and he's not intervening anymore? Is there, is that, do have you ever felt that way? Been in a situation and sometimes we'll be in a job where, doesn't seem like how, how hard we try, we can't ever seem to succeed. We can't ever please our boss, or we just don't seem to get ahead. Or you may be in a marriage where you feel like you're the only one working, and it's just not going anywhere. There could be all kinds of situations where you may feel that way. You may have an illness, and it just seems like every report is either worse or it's none better. I remember when my daughter 
was struggling with cancer as a child. And there for a while, it seems like every time they came to give another report, all they had, if they had news, was it was bad. And each report was a little bit worse or at least no better. And the feeling you get of, God, are you are you going to do anything? Are you even watching? Are you even in tune with what's going on? We may have all felt that way at times. We may not say it, but we may have felt it. And when I read this passage, it just jumped out at me. The Father's continuously at work. He didn't need a, a, a day to rest. That's what the study Bible was bringing out. God never wearies. I, I know we can't conceive of him like that. Last night, I didn't get hardly any sleep. My grandson and um, had had his tonsils out, and I was trying to help take care of him. And, you know, we uh, just didn't sleep well because he was, you know, uncomfortable, and we were trying to check on him. And, and I thought about, wow, I'm going to be so tired today. And I knew that I really hadn't got the rest that I needed. My daughter hadn't got the rest she needed. And I got to thinking about that, about how when we humans don't get rested, it seems like it affects so many things. We can, if we go long enough, we can get sick. Or we go long enough and we don't think very well. We make mistakes or we get irritable. We are wired. We have to have our sleep and rest. It's hard for us to even conceive of God being being a being that never needs to rest. I can't conceive that with my head, but will we accept that with our heart? He never rests. He never has to. He doesn't have to rest. So what I'm saying is that even though on the Sabbath, you know, on the seventh day, it said he it was a, it was a rest. Does that mean he just stops everything? He keeps the universe going. And I think that it's so important for us to uncover that truth again. That God is always, always has a plan in mind for humanity. He never stops being attuned to what's going on. That's more than our minds sometimes can conceive. But it's so important for us to remember that. Even if we don't feel it. Even if we don't see it. That even when I didn't see or feel that God was working on my daughter's behalf. Or that he's looking at the world and seeing what's going on. And that he's real, still trying to bring his will to pass. That's so important to get back into the word and get a fresh revelation. That God is at work. He's not tuned out. And Romans 8.28. If no one else needed it, I know I have needed it. And I'm sure we all have. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord are called according to his purpose. God is working and moving and trying to work everything to good to those that love him and are trying to fear and serve God. None of us do it perfectly, but so many times we need to be reminded of that because we've all sometimes been in situations where even the most dependable people failed us. We may have failed ourselves. It's important for us to recognize that God's promises are true. What he did for his people and the prophets of old, he does for us today. We can trust him no matter what the circumstances. God cannot lie and his faithfulness always endures. And you know, that's why it's so important for us to know his promises. It's also important for us not to twist those promises to be what they're not. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I think many of us have sometimes had our faith very shook because we thought somehow God was never going to let us go through something that we went through. That we thought we'd never suffer like we have. That if God loved us, he wouldn't allow that. In fact, that's where many atheists are born. And I know I've talked about that many times on this program, but I guess it's because it's something that keeps coming up is that, you know, God tells us that we will suffer. In fact, I was reading recently in Daniel and uh, boy, he had some deep revelations of what was to come. And he's talking really, he's prophesying God through him 
about even the Antichrist and what's going to come in the world. And he talks about that there was a remnant of real believers that stayed loyal to the Lord and that they were going to do strong and mighty things and they were going to do great feats. But he also tells that some of them were going to be martyred and killed and suffer. And I look at that and I'm thinking, wow, God, that's hard to, to take in. We, we don't, you know, sometimes we don't like the thought of having to suffer. But you know what? He also, also constantly reports that he will reward his people. That he will never forsake them and that he will be faithful. So even in those revelations that Daniel gave, there was messages of hope and God's faithfulness. And I thought about that again in reading this familiar passage in, in John. It's important, I think, when we get into the Word to say, Lord, open my eyes to all the messages that you have there. That's one of the things that's so amazing about the Word of God. We can go back to passages that we may have read several times and, and I thought we knew everything there was to get from it. And then a jewel just pop out at us, just like this one, which was about them criticizing the Lord for working on the Sabbath. But what come out of that is a reminder, God's always there working. He's, he's continuously aware. And that we need to understand, He is our advocate. He wants well for us, even though our circumstances may not look like it. And we may suffer temporarily. I encourage you, some of you may feel as if people have disappointed you, that you thought were loyal to you, that you just didn't think that they would turn their back on you or lose interest in you. So important to be encouraged with the loyalty of God to those that love Him. There's been times that we may not have acted loyal to the Lord, but He's always loyal. He doesn't just give up and say, well, I've washed my hands of those that love Him. I understand that there's times that I wonder if he's felt like, well, they've given up on me. I look around in the world sometimes and it's so heartbreaking to see that so much of the world looks like they've just turned their back on the Lord, that he's not reverenced anymore. And you know, when I was reading in Daniel, it was very upsetting to see the disrespect of what was to come, the Antichrist and the the whole movement with it. it. It indicated that he didn't really go after idols like they did all back in the Old Testament. You know, over and over and over, they were unfaithful to God and broke his heart by going to idolatry. But in Daniel, what we see is the Antichrist is going after power for himself. He craved and wanted the power. He didn't care about idols. He wanted himself to be the one that people worshipped and looked up to. Guys, that time's coming where we're in a power-hungry world that we see that there's the disrespect and a lack of reverence for God. But there are remnants of those of us who love God. Don't ever be fooled. There are people who still believe and love God and fear Him and have a reverence for God. Because I think about during that time that Daniel was writing, that he was talking about a time when those that defamed God. They, they went into the temple and were so disrespectful because they knew this would have been a slap in the face. They not only put up idols in the temple of God, they took and, and stopped the, the sacrifices and the worship of the true God. And they even went and took a pig, which was considered in those days just nasty, and put that on the altar and did it. Almost like just going to show what disgust and disrespect they had for for the real God. And I look at now and I think about, we see the jokes made about Jesus and God and movies that make fun and act almost like it's a comedy, like how ridiculous it is and just such disrespect of things of God. We have movies making fun of God and making little characters that are God or, or cry. And I think, what does God think? Oh, how horrific not to fear and reverence God. 
But I encourage you, he's not turned a blind eye. He sees it and he still loves humanity. He's still trying to intervene. And he's trying through us who believe to make a difference. To not feel like, oh, nothing's going on. He's also looking to us to be his mouth and his heart to a lost and deceived world. That if we just stay mad at him, how are we going to reach him? Do we love humanity like Christ does? I encourage you. There's a reason to leave us here once we've accepted Christ. Why not take us all home out of this mess? Because God loves humanity. He wants us to try to make a difference. And to do so, we need to stir up our own hope in God's promises. That he's there, he's working, and he's wanting us to work to him through us. I encourage you today, uncover those promises. Let's pull them back out and chew on them, meditate on them, stir them up in our hearts so that we'll be revived. We have assignments and we have a God that gives wonderful promises. Father, I pray for the listeners right now. Some may be discouraged and feel like you've forgotten about us. Some may feel, Father, that no one's loyal to them. Stir their heart to truth, Father. Help us to love you and believe your promises and take up our cross, Father, and be willing to suffer, but to know that you will never leave us or forsake us. You will reward us, Father, and that you are for us and that you're working and moving. I praise you for that, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening, and I look forward again to Uncover.